Welcome to Crimson Guitars and welcome to this. I am so happy. Uh, Josh has done his magic. There is... <laughs> well, okay, look, let's have a, let's have a closer. The headstock is less impressive than I'd hoped. I'm about to do the frets and then polish up those inlays, but this is what we are here for. This bog oak has caused some not inconsiderable problems. It sucked up, I think Josh said, about three kilograms of lacquer. All of you commenting on this, saying you should have used cactus juice or something like that, you are 100% correct. We should have. We're gonna have to jury rig something up, even if it's just less pressure with a vacuum bag. But, what do you think? I think I'm in love. Crimson Guitars is not only this YouTube channel, we are a guitar building school, one of the biggest in the world, if not the biggest. We, we teach hundreds of students a year how to make um, predominantly electric guitars in our custom-built studios downstairs. We also manufacture uh, a complete range of guitar building tools, most of which you're going to see in this next little montage. The Essential Fret Leveling and Dressing Toolkit is, is one for you if you want to do this at home. Essentially, I'm going to use a notch straight edge to check that the, the neck is level. I'm going to use a fret rocker to diagnose high and low frets as I'm leveling them, a leveling beam or leveling file to level those frets, crowning file and a fret end dressing file to dress the ends, make them nice and round and comfortable so you don't cut your hands up, and the crowning file to get a nice sharp point from which to intonate each note. And then in the end, uh, nut slotting files and any number of other little tools. Uh, so check out crimsonguitars.com if you haven't yet. But for now, I'm going to put on some music in headphones because of copyright purposes. And uh, where are my isotunes? Ah, there they are. And uh, I'm going to get leveling. Woohoo! Well, the notch straight edge uh, tells me that the neck is absolutely 100% perfectly straight. Yeah. Very interesting. Oh no, very rocker. I'm going to do a fall away, which is where I level these final threads at an angle. Just allows for a better, a better action. Okay, so that's all nice and level and sorted. I'm one labor done. Okay. Fret end dressing file. I'm going to carefully round over each of these fret ends and make them nice and comfortable. This is flat on one side, curved on the other, so you can round sideways and then round at an angle and uh, be done. These Evo Gold frets are very nice. They're also very, very hard. So this is taking a little bit longer than usual. In all seriousness, fret ends are the most important bit of this, other than, you know, fine. It's one of many important bits. It's one of many most important bits. Uh, so I've got those absolutely lovely. 
uh, waiting for a final polish. And now using a Sharpie, I'm going to go over the tops again so I can get our intonation point using a crowning file. Ah, fretboard protectors. Now I could use fret rubbers to go all the way up to super fine and get a mirror polish. It takes a little bit of time. In this case, well in this case, I'm going to use what we use on our production guitars, which is a tad faster. Let's go. Menzerna, good stuff. If you're saying to yourself that right now you would be hitting yourself with fear, that is the correct and only response. All right, that is the first pass. So that was the uh, number two button compound. We, there, there are different levels of quality with button compound, uh, most assuredly. And uh, we use Minzerna. There we go, I thought I got that right. Uh, it, it is really, really good stuff. It's like drill bits. Don't cheap out on button compound. Rake. Oh. I went back, uh, spent another couple of minutes on that highest um, level of <sighs> buffing compound. And I'm moving on to this. This is a sample that we've had made up. This is the final version of, I think it was eight different options of a hand buffing compound that uh, we're thinking of calling the bloody nice polishing compound for guitars or something like that. Uh, it'll be available through Crimson soon. Look at that color. Um, I think these might be the shiniest threads I've ever made. Rear guard shielding paint. Uh, this stuff takes a little while to dry. It is a high carbon content shielding paint that uh, helps well, stop hum and buzz and stuff. And I need to paint both the inside of the cavity and the back plate. That's going to take a little while to dry. While that is happening, I have been looking forward to this.
since I started this build. These are stunning. I'm loving this. There is always gonna be something you're not too happy with. And for me, it's the the headstock, it's too subtle. I was hoping for much shinier, it's just not. And then the same thing goes for the back of the headstock. Somehow it's all just a little bit dull. The gold here in the right light is stunning. Look at that, just look at it. Well. This didn't work as well, which is sad, but we shall move on and finish the bill. Nut, nut blank. Will that do? Uh, no. Uh, I'm gonna have to go downstairs to our shop and find a, a bone nut. I thought I had one, but I don't. Half pencil goes on top of the frets and that gives me what I need to cut. The thought occurred that I could potentially gold leaf the nut. And I could. But I'm not gonna. I'm not that far gone. Yet. Shielding paint is curing, nuts in, tuners are in. Bridge, now, I was thinking about doing three body stringing and if I was gonna do that, I really should have done that before the lacquer. I'm not going to risk that. So instead, I have got a tailpiece. But for now, time to put a bridge in. Yeah, this little bit is just over the resiny bit, which is sad, and I don't trust it, so uh, I'm doing this on a pillow drill. Ah, oh, lovely. It's basically invisible. I like. No. Yet. Okay, um, that's going into resin. Only the top bit of it's going into resin. I'm gonna drill the top bit of the hole out. So it's only actually being held in at the bottom section because if I crack 
there isn't now. Quite frankly, I will be a little bit put out. Seven. Seven and a half. Going in backwards. And then eight. Okay, success. Perfect, okay. Well, that was a little nerve wracking. So that's there. Now, what worried me was that is over the resin. It's basically invisible. It is invisible. So, what do you think of this guitar at this stage? I, well, I'm reserving judgment, you know. Meh. The plan is to have this. So that sits up in there. It gives us an interesting, interesting instrument. Lubrication. pair of custom crimson pickups. So that surround works. And that goes over the edge of the... Let me know in the comments below. It will be too late, but uh, let's see if I've made a mistake or not. I'm going to do this with surrounds because it's necessary. <clears throat> the rest of the guitar is too... I want to say refined, but uh, I'm not sure if this much gold leaf uh, is maybe a little bit over that line. But uh, yeah, it's too refined to have no surrounds. So, so what I'm going to do is take these horrific plasticky things and then use a, a medium fret rubber just to mat it down. It's going to end up looking like uh, nicely sanded ebony, something like that. So what would have been that is now that, much nicer. We've got a guitar to put together.
maybe do with a little bit of relief. So the nut's low enough already, uh, just. I've had to raise the bridge a fraction. So, for my playing style, it's not quite beefy enough. Let's get that out the way. Um, and the chances are, uh, there we are. The chances are that this is going to change. over yeah, too much uh, this is going to change over the next um, week or two anyway as it gets used to having strings on where's mine Obviously, I need to stretch the strings as well. Mostly there, mostly there. Controls, wiring. Do I screw the back plate in before I see if the wiring works? I found my old gold cable from years ago. It's always the bit where the uh, amp warms up. It's working. Okay, all right. Well, I'll tell you what, let's, uh, 
it's putting these screws, stretch the strings a little bit more and uh, put it through an amp in the other room. Uh, before I do that though, I have not yet drilled these holes yet. Yes, I am excited. This is the shiniest thing I have made in a long time. There have been comments of people saying, oh, you know, how much is it? Are you going to sell it, etc., all that jazz. At this point, I'm pretty convinced uh, there have been worries about the, uh, the joint between the resin and the gold leaf and the wood. And because this wood is so jagged and rough, I didn't think there was going to be an issue. But And because gold leaf is somewhat porous, pretty much everything is, and it does seem like it's held together. Uh, I am going to make the sacrifice of, uh, you know, holding on to this one to just make sure that it is stable and solid. It's stable and solid. Um, however, if you do want something like this, we are happy to take commissions and we'll 100% build something along these lines for you. Um, just get in touch, crimsonguitars.com. Uh, this is kind of what we do. Anyway, let's go and... Uh, I am by no means a musician. But I do want to hear what she sounds like. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. <sighs> Black guitars. Dust. Marks. White guitars. Even worse. Or at least more difficult to make. kids in a minute. The school will be fine, it's right.
still a little jangly. I've got, I've got almost no relief on here. I need to play around with the truss rod a little bit. The neck is um, um, not quite there yet. But by gum, I'm going to have fun breaking this thing. I really do have to go and pick up my kids from school. This really is a problem um, because I don't want to. <laughs> okay, um, I am incredibly happy with how this turned out. The, the worry was that the resin and the gold leaf would, the, the join there wouldn't work, but that's absolutely not the case. It's not your average resin build. Um, the, uh, the carving and, and everything, the bog oak, um, quite frankly, I've had a total, total, total blast. Thank you to everybody who's watched this. All of you have subscribed as a result of it. If you haven't yet, please hit that button and notifications, all that jazz. It does make a big difference to the channel. We hit 200,000 subscribers during this build. Uh, we have got a whole hell of a lot more coming up. Uh, the 2020 build is being launched uh, New Year's Eve, and that is uh, going to be another amazing thing of a completely different type of guitar, but you know, uh, it is what it is. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think of her. I have, I see absolutely everything. Uh, I reply to as many as I can every evening. Um, I mean, you can see how dirty my fingers are through that. <laughs> ah, crikey, okay. Check out our Instagram at Crimson Guitars. Check out Crimson Guitars. Many of the tools, machines, etc. not machines, many of the tools and jigs and stuff that I'm used during this build we make here. We have one of the most awesome guitar building schools in the world right here. Um, and we make Luthier's tools and all sorts. So there we go. Thank you. Now I've got like 30 more seconds to play, so leave me alone. Seriously, thank you for watching. Thank um, House of House of Resin, who who gave us the um, Eco Epoxy resin and supported us uh, throughout this build for for that, with lots of advice as well. They're a fantastic company. Um, this is my first major resin build, and they were great. Um, but most importantly, it, it really is you guys who watched um, and subscribed and all of that. And you know, we hit two hundred thousand subscribers during this build. Um, 200,000 subscribers, it's insane. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>